हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वीडियो इज फॉर पी बी ए थर्ड ईयर फाइनेंस स्पेशलाइजेशन स्टूडेंट्स एंड वी विल डिस्कस द सब्जेक्ट कॉल्ड डब्ल्यू सी एम दैट इज वर्किंग कैपिटल मैनेजमेंट डे स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट वीडियो ऑफ योर डब्ल्यू सी एम क्लास वी वी आर डिस्कसिंग रिगार्डिंग कैश मैनेजमेंट दैट इज यूर यूनिटेड टू one of the important chapter cash management which includes both theoretical aspect as well as programmatical part is also there so we are discussing the cash management we have completed different aspects of cash management like meaning characteristics objectives motives for holding the cash which is a very very important question motives for holding cash we have also discussed how to determine or determining the optimum cash balance or determining the optimum cash balance or you can also say the approaches to cash management we have also seen the various models for determining the optimal cash balance we have also seen miller orr model we have also discussed jp or J, william j baumel model for determining the cash management for any trading concern or any business concern message so in today's video we will discuss one of the important question from exam point of view that is nothing but the factors factors determining the cash needs factors determining the cash needs we will discuss in today's video so the factors determining the cash needs we have also similar type of question we have also discussed in your unit 1 also that is the what you can say factors determining the working capital factors determining the working capital so just like that in your unit 2 also comprises of one of the important question like factors determining the what you can say cash needs factors determining the cash needs there are certain points most likely x difference points is there for number 1 to point number 8 eight different points are there or eight different factors which determines the cash needs which is very very important so what are the factors now before starting from point number 1 we will have just have a discuss on regarding what do mean by the factors determine the cash needs okay students as we already discussed in the previous classes that finding out the exact amount of cash is a very very challenging task for every business concern how much cash we should keep with us how much cash we should be kept with us what is the limit what is the maximum limit of cash what is the minimum amount of cash that every business concern should hold is always a challenging task so there is no such what you can say uh easy criteria for determining the optimal cash needs because what does it indicates or what will be you know, its influence if we see above cash or if we see surplus cash with us then also then also it will not be profitable for us because the amount of cash will be unnecessary blocked in our business we could have easily invested in some other marketable securities also on the other hand if deficient cash is there it means we are not holding sufficient amount of cash then also it is not quite advisable because at any point of time we may not be able to meet the day to day requirements of the business because we are having very less amount of cash so we will not be able to run our business in a very smooth manner so it is always been a challenging task for the business to hold a uh, optimum amount of cash neither it should be too high neither it should be nor it should be too uh, short so we should always kept sufficient or optimal cash balance there are certain factors or elements which helps the businessman to determine the optimal cash needs of the business what are those factors let's discuss them by one by one Your point number one comprises of point number one synchronization of cash flows. There are some little bit difficult words there. Synchronization of cash flows. Dear students, your 
cash flows involves your cash flows involves two things one is cash inflow second is cash outflow cash inflow and cash outflow so cash flows are of two types cash flows of any business are of two types number one cash inflow number two cash outflow inflow means all the receivables of cash all the receipts of cash where from the cash will come to the organization is nothing but known as the cash inflows it may be profits it may be the gross receipts from sales it may be other sources of cash whatever may be the source if the cash is coming to the business then it should be recorded or it should be recognized as the cash inflows on the other hand if we are making a certain amount of payment or if the cash goes out from the business it should be considered as cash outflows maybe it may include various aspects like suppose you are investing in a project or we are thinking for investing in a project so again automatically the cash goes out that is also cash outflow when we are making the payment to outsiders or to meet day-to-day -day expenses cash goes out again it's one kind of cash outflow so in simple terms when the cash comes out from the business when the cash goes out from the business it is generally considered as the cash outflows now synchronization is nothing but proper management the word synchronization can also be categorized as the proper management proper management proper balance between the cash inflows and cash outflows always plays a very vital role so far as management of actual amount of cash is concerned because see if in today's competitive scenario we are not able to find out our correct amount of cash inflows as well as we are not able to find out the correct amount of cash outflows then a proper balance cannot be maintained so it is the first duty of the businessman to properly ascertain where from the sources will come or the cash inflows will come and where to the cash outflows will go or the cash will go or the cash will be moved to the different different sources so first thing we should have to recognize the sources of both cash inflow as well as the cash outflow then we have to make a proper balance we have to make a proper balance between the cash inflows and cash outflows according to our requirement of the business according to our requirement of the business one of the simple example you may also take for example for running the day-to-day -day activities of the business we require 30,000 rupees I mean these are the rupees I need so we require 30,000 rupees for meeting our day-to-day -day expenses so it is very necessary for us to hold at least a minimum amount of rupees 30,000 suppose cash inflows on a particular day amounts to 70,000 70,000 cash inflows of the business on a particular day is 70,000 so the business can plan for making of a payment or making of a cash outflows up to 40,000 only because 30,000 is the minimum amount of requirement for running the business so 70,000 minus 30,000 that is the minimum balance or minimum cash requirement so equals to 40,000 so up to 40,000 only up to 40,000 only the business can afford to uh, pay towards cash outflows or can easily make the payment up to 40000 that is 40000 now if we are not knowing these facts then our business will definitely hamper our business will not run in a very smooth manner because we are completely unable to find our cash inflows as well as our cash outflows so in order to be very very wise in order to run our business in a very smooth manner we should make a proper balance I'm just giving you the small example we, we must make a proper balance between the cash inflows as well as the cash outflows now, once the cash inflows and the cash outflows are properly maintained then there is absolutely no problem for running our business so in the example we can make payment up to 40,000 so that the minimum is 30,000 is always kept because we are discussing the cash needs the cash needs cash needs so our cash needs is 30,000 so once we are determining this then we will not face any problem so far as our managing the cash inflows and outflows are concerned so the first point is synchronization of cash flows which includes management of or making a proper balance between the cash inflows as well as the cash outflows this is all about point number one
Let's move to the second part. Second part comprises of consideration of short costs. Consideration of short costs. There are certain amount of as the word short cost is there. Short costs are nothing but these costs are helpful in determining the working capital. Short costs means the small small cost which always determine the working capital. But we are discussing the cash needs or cash management part. Now, if we always consider point number two is a consideration. So if we make a proper consideration of a small amount of cost then also then also we will be able to make a proper uh, management regarding the cost of a production remember the point cost of a production if you are unable to manage these small small cost then automatically it may lead to increase in the productivity or increase in the production or increase in the production cost rather not production production cost so if our production cost increase then automatically the cost of the product will increase as a result of that we have to sell the product at a lesser price edge compared to earlier so when we are selling the product at a lesser price then obviously our profitability will decline so which is not which is again not a wise option so what to do consider the short cost and try to minimize to the most minimum possible extent it is possible try to reduce the short amount of costs or small small cost to the most minimum possible extent so that our cost of production will not increase the once our cost of production will not increase we may not require to reduce the sales price which automatically lead to increase in profitability or maintaining the same amount of profitability because once we are not able to maintain the consistent profit then it is quite difficult for us to run our business so at least we should try if not increase in profitability at least being a businessman we should look forward or we should try to uh, maintain a proper balance so that our consistency in profitability will automatically achieved so this is a very very important point so if we cost the small small costs various costs is there small cost example you can take lot of examples so if we are able to minimize these small amount of cost our productivity or our what you can say uh, production cost will not increase now once our production cost will not increase then our profitability may not decline even though not increasing but it will not decline rather it will be in a consistent manner throughout the year now once we are able to maintain a consistent amount of profitability throughout the year again we should say that our business is running in a very smooth manner okay we are not making huge amount of profit or there is not increase in the profits but still we may not worry too much because yes we are maintaining a uh, consistent amount of profit so we will not be worried we can easily able to run our business in a very smooth manner if you are getting consistent profits so for getting the consistent profits it is quite necessary for cash management because remember the ultimate aim of managing the cash is to increase the profit only no doubt we are discussing the factors of determining the cash needs but still we may what you can say, say that the objective of this cash management is nothing but to increase the overall profitability of the organization the whole chapter is totally directed towards management of cash so that our profits will always increase so we should always consider the small cost while calculating the cash requirement or while calculating the cash needs third point position of accounts receivable position of accounts receivable dear students position of accounts receivable accounts receivable is nothing but what sundry debtors remember accounts receivable means the 
position of sundry debtors because sundry debtors are the persons to whom the business is going to receive the money so sundry debtors is also another way may be termed as the accounts receivable so in order to determine the exact amount of cash do you not think that we should give due consideration towards our sundry debtors do you not think that we will not leave sundry debtors can we leave the sundry debtors the answer is absolutely no because sundry debtors forms a major part or plays a major role so far as receivables or cash is concerned because sundry debtors forms one of the important role in current assets also they are our prime current assets of the organization so how can we forget them how can we forget the accounts receivable it is next to impossible for managing the cash and we will not talk about accounts receivable it is next to impossible we should always give due concentration towards our accounts receivable or towards our sundry debtors why is the answer is quite simple because sundry debtors are the persons from whom the business is going to receive the money on very short period of time on a very upcoming days or on the future days so it is quite necessary for us to always consider our accounts receivables or always consider our accounts receivable or what you can say the sundry debtors now for managing sundry debtors we may apply certain ratios that is average collection period ratio we might have been studied in first year in cna subject that is average collection period uh, or you can say the debtors velocity ratio so for average collection period we have to consider the credit sales and we have to consider the number of days allowed for credit then we are calculating the average collection period for calculating the average collection period we should always consider the credit sales as well as the number of days allowed then we can easily able to calculate the average collection period now once we are determining the average collection period it is quite helpful for us to determine the amount of cash that we must hold for running our business for running our business how take one simple example suppose suppose the average collection period average collection period amounts to suppose four days because the standard ratio is less than 5 remember the standard ratio for average collection period is less than 5 it should be less than 5 then only we can say our business is running in a very good and smooth manner now suppose the average collection period comes to 4 days fine and the amount say average collection amount calculated to be 10000 simple example 4 days collection period and 10000 is the uh, amount average collection amount in every 4 days now now suppose our day to day requirement of cash is 20000 for example the day to day for meeting our day to day expenses we require 20000 cash every day so from what from one way by calculating the average collection period as well as by calculating the average collection amount we are know that it is in every 4 days we are going to receive a sum of rupees 10000 so per day if we divide it 10000 divided by 4 it comes to rupees 2500 10000 divided by 4 equal to 2500 so in what way in one way we may consider that yes rupees 2500 is automatically received every day by way of the accounts receivable or by way of sundry debtors so we may reduce our cash balance we may reduce our cash requirement so 20000 is the minimum amount of requirement per day 
now we may deduct rupees 2500 from rupees 20000 because we are absolutely sure that our accounts receivable our accounts receivable always gives us uh, rupees 2500 for a day so 20000 minus 2500 equals to 17500 so 17500 is our minimum amount of cash that we require every day for running our business so even though it is a very negligible amount even though it seems to be a very small amount that only 2500 we are receiving every day but still it affect a lot or it can put a huge effect so that our overall profitability is concerned because remember students per day we are receiving 2500 per day in a year 365 days so just to think about it 2500 multiplied with 365 it will be some lakhs it will the answer will be definitely in lakhs you can also calculate 2500 into 365 it will be the figure will be in lakhs so in a lakhs of amount or some lakhs of amount we are reducing by way of our accounts receivable so accounts receivable always always helps us to know our exact amount of cash needs this is all about point number three Then comes our point number four, nature of the product or business. Point number four consists of nature of the product or business. So, the type of business or the type of product that we are selling always affect a lot. So far as determination of gas needs, determination of gas needs is concerned. The type of product that we are selling or the type of business that we are making always plays a very very vital role. How? See, if our business is very small in nature, there are three types of business organization, large scale business, small, uh, medium scale business and small scale business. Large, medium, small, three types of organizations is there. Suppose our organization is very small in nature, so automatically our cash requirement will also vary less. If our organization is a very large one or very big in nature, then it is needless to say our cash needs will be definitely higher. We are requiring very high amount of money because our business is larger in nature or is a very large concern. So huge amount of funds is required for running our business activities in a day to day manner. So the size of the business or nature of business always plays a very vital role. Nature of the business also include the type of business that we are doing, the type of business that we are doing. Suppose our business is a manufacturing concern. So obviously the cash flows or the requirement of cash will be definitely higher because every day we require certain amount of money regarding procurement of raw material because only when raw materials we are able to procure then only we can able to send these raw materials to our production department and our production department can able to produce the product and can give to the sales department and can sales department can give to the marketing department for actual sales and then only the profits will come so procurement of raw materials will be a, again a, the question of a huge amount of funds arrangement or it may lead to high cash needs on the other hand, if our business is not a manufacturing sector rather than it is a trading sector or it is a BPO unit, then obviously we require certain less amount of cash as compared to our manufacturing unit. Because in the case of BPO sector or in the case of a trading sector, we are not require a huge amount of money regarding procurement of raw materials or purchase of raw materials. Rather, we can also require the money which is required for meeting the day-to-day -day expenses like payment of salaries, payment of wages, payment of office rent, payment of office electricity bill, office telephone charges, office nowadays broadband charges or internet charges, office postal and telinary etc. etc. So for meeting the small small expenses we are required certain amount of cash but not very huge amount of cash is required because we are running a BPO sector not a manufacturing unit. So our cash requirement will not be very high. So this is all about the nature of the business, the nature of the product 
product also plays a very vital role. The type of product that we are selling, if our product is a very costlier one, if our product is high, includes high amount of cost, then automatically our cash needs will be definitely higher. For example, production of this marker pen will not require huge amount of cash. Production of that, this marker pen will not require huge amount of cash because hardly it cost 60 to 70 rupees per pen. On the other hand, on the other hand, production of mobile phones or from mobile phones, mobile sellers' point of view, they require very high amount of money so far as their cash needs is concerned because you, you know that every mobile phone on an average say requires at least 10,000 if not more or if not less. For example, say a single mobile phone can cost us 10,000 rupees whereas a marker pen can cost us only 50 to 60 rupees. So the type of product that we are dealing with again plays a major factor so far as the gas needs is concerned a low cost product can require very low amount of gas whereas a costlier product always requires huge amount of gas for its business or for meeting the day to day expenses or for running the business. So the nature of the product, the size of a business, the nature of business, these all plays a very significant role so far as factors or elements of cash needs is concerned. Next point, availability of other sources of funds. Availability of other sources of funds. What does it indicate? Availability of other sources of funds means we must be ready enough, we must be capable enough regarding always the other sources because while discussing the motives for holding cash, I have also tell you that the business also requires certain amount of money or certain amount of cash towards its contingencies. There may be certain situations where the business required certain amount of cash during contingency. Fire ho gaya. Good summer jal gaya. So, we have So, you should have sufficient amount of cash. That is the present scenario. That is the best example. Today is the scenario of lockdown. Lockdown situation going on. So, huge amount of contingencies is there. So requirement of a contingency will be definitely higher during these periods because you quite know that from March month onwards, from the month of March onwards, March, April, May, June, July and August, uh, almost six for six months the business is completely stopped. So unless otherwise we don't have, we don't hold sufficient amount of cash, how can we will be able to run our business in a very smooth manner? So it is quite necessary for us so that we should always look forward toward other sources of funds also. We should give due concentration what are the other sources of the business apart from its actual selling. What are the various other sources from which, from which the business can afford to arrange its fund. We should always consider those facts also. The other sources of funds may be include arrangement of funds from financial institutions, arrangement of funds from our convenient parties or third parties, availability or payment or management of funds or arrange, making arrangement of funds from various banks. So various other sources are there so far as business is concerned. So we must always look forward for those other sources so that our business can run in a very smooth manner. Why this is needed students? That is from the very beginning of the point and tell you that we must always consider apart from our actual sales or apart from our actual activities, business activities, we should give due concentration towards other sources of funds. Then only we can easily be able to run our business during the case of contingencies also. 
because uh, today is such a situation where we cannot say the contingencies will not come. There is lockdown, there is fire, there is theft, there is workplace, there is cyclone, no, there is riot. So a lot of things is there, a lot of contingencies are there. So in order to cope up with those contingency situations, we must arrange for or we must plan for various other sources of funds so that these funds that we already planned regarding from those other sources, we can easily able to convert them or we can easily able to use them during the period of contingencies. Because as you know, business may all, always face huge amount of contingency at any moment the contingency may arise. So only when we, we are making proper arrangement for these other sources, then only we can able to utilize these other sources of funds towards these contingencies. So the business or the running the business in a very smooth manner will not be hampered at all. We can easily able to run our business in a smooth manner at every point of time. At every point of time. So this is all our point number five. Next point number six, man, management's attitude regarding procurement it is also a very important point. For every business unit, the directors always play a very vital role, or the management, the CEOs, chief executive officers always play a very vital role, or the top level managers always play a very vital role. So far as procurement of attitude regarding procurement is concerned. Procurement means the procurement of raw material. Procurement of uh, other sources of funds, procurement of uh, funds, procurement of uh, bank finance, all these are concerned. So, management's attitude always plays a significant role so far as running the business or determining the cash needs. Determining the cash needs is concerned. So, the management always plays a vital role regarding, or uh, one of the important factor, the top level managers is one of the important factors so far as gas needs is concerned. So the management up to what extent they are ready, to what extent they are capable enough, to what extent they are thinking towards procurement of raw materials in the right time, to what extent they are ready to pay the cash regarding purchase of raw materials concerned, always plays a significant role for these gas needs. Next point, operating and cash cycle, operating and cash cycle. So the operating cycle as I already explained to you while discussing the unit one, that is the concept of operating cycle, the business always moves, the business always moves, first we are making the purchase of raw material, then we make it production, we make a production, then we are dispatched to the sales department, the sales department to the marketing department, then marketing department will convert the goods into sales or goods into cash so the cash comes again the cash will be utilized in purchase of raw material again the production process moves on again the sale of goods is there and again by selling of the goods cash comes to the business so this operating cycle keeps on moving this operating cycle keeps on running throughout the year 365 days or so far as the business is running, the operating cycle always moves. So the operating cycle also one of the important factor as cash needs is concerned. Because the operating, depending upon the operating cycle, we can easily able to manage our cash. Depending upon the operating cycle, we can, the business can easily able to decide its cash needs. Because the business have an idea regarding what is the period of operating cycle yes this is this much of amount is easily achievable in this days or in a period of 10 days we are receiving a sum of rupees 1 lakh so keeping this in mind the business can easily plan for the cash needs so again this plays a vital role then last point we will also consider market conditions market conditions in relation to the assets what our what is our what is our assets position in the general market if we are able to sell our current assets as well as the fixed assets in what way or in what time period we are able to convert our assets into cash the assets include both fixed assets as well as current assets so what is the time period required or converting the assets or converting the fixed assets
what is the time period required for converting those fixed assets as well as current assets into cash always plays a very major role so we must always plan for which assets also because our assets always plays a significant role while cash needs is concerned so by properly managing the assets we can also plan for the cash needs also so this is all about what you can say the factors which which determines the cash needs there are eight points so the factors which determines the cash needs compared to so eight different points and each point we have explained in a very detailed manner starting from uh, synchronization of cash inflows to market condition in relation to the assets in relation to assets so there are eight different points or you can say eight different factors which determines the cash needs which determines the cash needs so just like in your unit 1 you have an important question regarding factors determining working capital management just like that in your unit 2 also you have an important question regarding factors determining the cash needs or what are the elements which determine the optimal cash needs of the business so in today's video we have discussed in a very detailed manner starting from point number 1 and ending with point number 8 these are the factors that's it in today's video